We took a quick break out here at Asotocon to catch up with two entrepreneurs here in the automotive space. We've got Joe Pack, CEO of Amber, and we've also got Jimmy Douglas, CEO of Plug. So guys, thanks for joining us. So it's been cool that you guys have had this entrepreneurship journey that have kind of overlapped in your relationship over the last year. Joe, let's start with you. So tell us a little bit about what you do at Amber and why you decided to do that. Yeah, so at Amber, we offer protection plans and technical support for electric vehicles, starting in with Tesla. Easiest way to think about it, Apple Care and Virtual Genius Bar for your Tesla. You make it so easy. Yeah. So how did you decide to do that and how did you know that there was a space in the market for something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So my parents actually purchased one of the first Model S's that were used, a 2015 Model S with 185,000 miles on it. At the time, I thought it was a very terrible investment to make, but you know, it's at 250,000 miles plus now, it's still running. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think a big thing that's been on their mind is these unexpected repairs. And you know, digging more into it, I thought, hey, uh, if iPhone users have this great experience, go to the Apple store, getting Apple Care, getting all of their questions answered at the Genius Bar, yeah. why couldn't we offer that for our Tesla owners and EV owners? Yeah, so like with those two side by side, like iPhone batteries are an issue for the normal consumer. Sure. And on EVs, people are concerned about battery life there. What are you guys seeing for that and how can you find coverage for that? Yeah, so we do offer plans that cover the battery all the way up to the full replacement amount. So if you have a Model 3, that's going to be eight to $10,000 replacement. For Model S and X, that's going to be about 18,500 is the going rate. Um, you know, we don't see a lot of replacements out in the market quite yet, uh, but there are other expensive repairs, charge port doors, onboard chargers, different electronics within the vehicle. You have to remember these are smartphones on wheels and everything right. is interconnected and everything can lead to a thousand dollar plus bill. Yeah. Well, what I love about your setup is you do go direct to the consumer, like Correct. that's the easy option there. Mm -hmm. And so with Jimmy, you're out here helping dealers that's right. uh, through Plug that's right. and you've had great success over the last few months. So like, tell us where you're at and what you're expecting for this year. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. It's great to be back at a SoduCon. Yeah. We, we launched the company publicly on that very stage yeah, right, right over there I remember it. last time. And at that point in time, we were just about to launch our beta. And our whole goal was to sell our first million dollars worth of EVs uh, before the end of Q1 2024. Sure. We did that. And then in the subsequent month in April, we sold another million dollars worth of EVs. So now we're trying to march toward uh, a, uh, a run rate uh, in the tens of millions, uh, hopefully by this summer. That's our goal. And in doing so, we're also expanding our support for different categories of selling entities and different uh, makes and models. So uh, we're just going after growth right now and excited to meet more dealers here to bring them along for the journey. Yeah, sure. So you guys are both out in California. Joe, you're in San Francisco. Yep. You're down in LA. Uh, Jimmy, how did you first meet Joe and like, what does that relationship look like over the last year? So I definitely remember the first time Joe and I met. We were uh, in Menlo Park. We had lunch. Uh, it was right when we were starting our companies at the exact same time. And for the life of me, I can't remember how we got introduced. Can you remember? Yeah, we got introduced through a fellow founder uh, founder of Blue Dot. Oh, that's Through right. Blue Dot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we had our iconic lunch and we were talking about our visions for our companies. We had both just jumped out. I had just jumped out of Tesla, you out of venture capital, right? Yep. And uh, ever since then, we've been uh, finding lots of opportunities to help each other along the way. And uh, maybe just maybe we'll find more official ways to uh, join forces uh, in the future. Yeah, sure. And what can we expect from you guys as far as like plug those? So mm -hmm. this next year, there's a lot you guys are trying to ramp up. Um, you've had a ton of success. Obviously, you're a million dollars in Q1. Mm -hmm. What are you guys expecting through the end of 2024? Some big dreams? We, we have huge aspirations uh, for growth. Right now, we're still in beta, so we're, sure. we're actually tempering it to some extent to make sure that we provide a great experience and continue to learn. But uh, the goal ever since launching up there was to uh, march toward a $50 million gross merchandise volume uh, run rate uh, within the context of the summer. So sure. that's what we're marching toward right now. Yeah. So I think with dealers, some of the barriers to entry with EVs is just the lack of understanding. It's not easy. It's not simple. They don't have access to the right inventory. Mm -hmm. So what kind of the, the barriers are you breaking down for dealers? Yeah, so for dealers who are comfortable with used EVs and they just want to know exactly what they're getting, we make it so that they can 100% of the time have transparency into some of the data points that can really determine an EV's longevity and its value. Uh, sometimes it can be the battery, sometimes it can be software-enabled features, it can be destination charging network access. These are really important features in your ability to price a vehicle very accurately and then sell it very quickly, which is what we've observed amongst the dealer body who have leaned really heavily into EVs, which is that they turn the cars very fast. And your best chance of doing that in buying the car right and selling it right is having access to the most uh, precise information when doing so. Yeah. 
So Joe, you've been on this entrepreneur journey for like about a year now. Yep. Um, like what's the biggest thing that you've learned about starting a business, launching it, and like what are some of the struggles that you've been able to overcome? The biggest thing that I've learned is that delegating is very important for a CEO. Sure. So, you know, I'm the type of leader that really gets into the weeds. My team could tell you that I'm a perfectionist, sure. um, but I have had to really give that up and trust them and see that growth from the rest of the team. And that has been very rewarding to see, uh, to be able to trust them with, you know, the greater responsibilities. And as we grow really quickly, to also see them scale up sure. and become leaders themselves. So that, that has been a very big learning for me okay. as a first time CEO. Yeah. So with your team, um, your journey as a whole, I think it's always cool when there's struggles that you can overcome mm -hmm. and then you find solutions to those. Sure. What was something meaningful that has happened over the last year that you're like, man, that was a big win? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the product that we sell uh, there's a lot of skepticism about whether we can fulfill our promise or not. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the product. If you think about it, $100 a month to protect your battery, right? And that's the biggest fear that consumers have sure. of, of going over to electric, minus perhaps like range anxiety, right? So uh, being able to get our first customers on board, you know, gain that credibility and have them actually reach out to us and say, hey, can we sell your product? I have tons of folks who are looking for this and I'd love to tell the story about Amber and you know how to protect their vehicle for a very affordable monthly rate. So yeah. whether it's direct to consumer or we're starting to work through dealers as well to give them that low monthly rate through financing, you know, we think this is a great time for consumers to start adopting and that that big barrier was to get those first customers, to get those believers. So that's a big obstacle we had to overcome. Yeah. And with consumers, obviously you're overcoming one of the big barriers to entry, which is just that that fear yeah. and that risk of those batteries. Yeah. So for people who can learn more about that, what's the best way that they can learn about Amber? The best way they can learn is to go online to our website at getamber.com. So our website has a lot of information and FAQs about what is covered, what's not, the three steps it takes to get a claim approved. It's all very transparent. Uh, we also have a concierge team uh, comprised of 10 plus year veterans from Tesla in service advisory, in technical service. So we can answer any question, whether it's just, hey, how do I turn on this car to, should I be worried about this battery and how can I get protection? Sure, yeah. And Joe, just in closing, if there was some advice that you wanna to give to other entrepreneurs out there, like just kind of reflecting on your journey over the last year, delegation obviously said was a big thing, but sure. what kind of advice would you give to entrepreneurs? The biggest piece of advice I would say is take the time to find something that you're gonna be really excited to get up every morning to be excited about. There are lots of obstacles, there are lots of times you get punched in the face, you have to get back up. And if it's something that you really believe in, it's something that you really enjoy, and I'm sure Jimmy, you could attest to this as well, then you'll get up and you'll be really motivated and you'll see that progress even when it doesn't seem like things are going your way. Yeah, that's awesome. And then Jimmy, same thing to you. If you could give advice to entrepreneurs out there, what would you tell them based off of your failings or your successes that you've had? I mean, obviously you've had like zero failings, right? So <laughs> I have a failure. I have failures every day. Yeah. And all that's important is that we win as many times as we lose. Uh, and that's what keeps us going. Yeah, no, Joe's right. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that you need to be intrinsically motivated to do every single day because there's plenty of quantifiable reasons not to do it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you, you need that, uh, that drive uh, and purpose behind what you're doing in order to persevere. The other thing I'll say though is if you do have uh, the idea or the market opportunity that would provide you with that drive, there's never gonna be a perfect time. And uh, one thing that I wish I could go back and do again is probably jump into something like this a decade earlier than I actually did. And I was looking for that perfect time. and. Uh, I chose the least perfect time possible, which was right after my son was born, uh, to jump out of a, a very stable career and uh, do something that is categorically unstable. Uh, but thankfully, I have the intrinsic motivation and I'm jumping out of bed to work on this every single day and I'm excited for him to get to witness that, but I would definitely be less tired if I were doing this a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So Jimmy, it's been cool to see your success with Plug and everything that's been happening. And Joe, I'm really looking forward to seeing everything that you guys are doing, but thanks for joining us today. 